Food is your fuel. Your are what you eat. What you digest and what you assimilate is what you are made up of. So every french fry you put in, every apple becomes a part of you. It's an eyelash, it's a fingernail, it's a toe, it's a muscle. Every little bit becomes part of who you are. And nutrition is the foundation of your body. So it can build you up to health. You can have optimal vitality, graceful aging, more energy and enhanced performance if you eat the right foods. So I'm going to introduce you to your one and only technical term of the evening, and that is glycogen. Glycogen, can we all say it? Glycogen. glycogen. We're going to come back to it a few times tonight. So glycogen comes from eating carbohydrates. So when carbohydrates go in your body, it assimilates into glucose, and when it doesn't use to do other body functions, it stores in your muscles. And this is what powers your muscles when you're playing soccer. So if you've ever noticed that there's less activity in the second half of the game, anyone notice that? Most of that is due to the fact that you don't have enough glycogen in your muscles and it's been depleted. So how far fast and how far you can run depends on how much glycogen you have in your muscles. Most muscle glycogen gets moved up in the first half of the game, so we're not in any stores. And if we play a back-to-back -back game, then what's the performance like? Exactly. So if you don't eat properly, then you don't have enough glycogen stores. So if you begin your game with enough glycogen stores, you're going to have the advantage over all of the other players. So to achieve this, you need to eat plenty of carbohydrates and lots and lots of fluids. You need to ingest your carbohydrates before, during, and after your game. And we're going to go a little bit more in depth to that a little later on. First, we're going to talk about some carbohydrates. So carbohydrates, for a soccer player, need to take up about 60 to 70% of your diet. So what happens is most diets are about 50% carbohydrates, 30 to 40% fat, and then maybe 20% protein. So we need to change the rule on this because we want to build all that glycogen into the muscles. So we need the carbohydrates for high intensity exercise, which is those bursts running down the soccer field, kicking the ball. You can run about 10 kilometers in the game. So you actually, if you think about what kind of fuel you would put in your body to run 10 kilometers, that's about as much as you need. So we have some really great sources here for carbohydrates. So uh, one of the best ones is whole grains. This is a picture here of quinoa. Has anybody tried quinoa before? Excellent. It's an excellent grain. Cooks just as fast as minute rice. Boil it in water, put the lid on, cooks. It's actually also a high protein grain and it also contains a bunch of amino acids. Uh, whole grain pastas, hot and cold cereals, build your meals with all these hearty grains. And they've got lots of vitamin B and zinc. And you want to have about five or more a day. The serving size is about half a cup. Our vegetables are also considered carbohydrates. And they're packed with nutrients and vitamin C. Vitamin C is an antioxidant that helps in recovery and any kind of stress you're putting on the body. Soccer does cause a lot of stress in the body. You're running up and down the field. We all get our bruises. Our antioxidants are going to help with that. And you want to have about four or more a day, which is about a cup raw or half a cup cooked. What's better, raw or cooked? Raw. Mm -hmm. Raw. That's right. And our last carbohydrate are our fruits. We want to have two or more a day. They're rich in fiber, vitamin C, beta carotene. Uh, kiwi, melons, and fresh berries are the highest for vitamin C. And you want to have about one piece a day. Uh, fresh is optimal. Uh, you could have cooked fruit for about half a cup or half a cup of fruit juice. We're talking about real fruit juice, fruit juice that you make in a juicer or anything that says 100% juice from the grocery store. So carbohydrates is our most important, and then we have three other nutrients that we need in our body in order to make it go for soccer. We need proteins, we need fats, and we need fluids. So for protein and exercise, what you need it for is to repair your muscles. Your muscles start to repair after you use them in about 24 hour period after. So when you're resting is when you need your protein. It also attributes to a greater lean body mass, and you're going to burn just a small amount of physical activity, but not enough. Mainly, you're going to be burning your carbohydrates. So your diet should be made up of about 50, only 15% protein. For the general population, you're going to be consuming about maybe 300 calories a day in your protein. How come you don't lose red meat there, Tom? Red meat is very toxic and very acidic to the body. It's really hard to digest. It takes about four or five hours to digest. It basically becomes an acid in the body more than an amino acid. An amino acid is a protein that your body can use to repair your muscles. And it becomes acidic to the body. 
pretty useless. So are you saying don't eat red meat at all or before no. a game? Or? Okay. No. In general, in general, no, and definitely not before a game. Because that acidity is going to saturate into your muscles as well, slow you down. So also in the protein sources, you're going to do your legumes. So those are your lentils, your beans, your soy milk, rice milk, tofu. Tempeh is a fermented soybean. It comes in a cake. You can get it at the health food store. It's a really great alternative to meat. You can cook it with all the same seasonings as meat, cover it in sauce, add it with your whole grains. Absolutely perfect thing to eat before a game. So your proteins, you want to keep these down. You Maybe two or more a day. And the serving size is pretty small, a quarter cup. So basically, a serving of protein is about the size of the palm of your hand. So also for a child, so if a child's size is going to be the size of a child's hand. So it's all relative to your own body. And the good fats. Who's heard of essential fats? Omega-3, omega-6, omega-9. So we want to take these at about 25 to 30% of our total intake. So they're called essential fats because you can't produce them in your body. So what we need is omega-3 can kickstart your metabolism cycle so that it can make six and it can make nine and continue on in the cycle that the body needs. And the functions of these are improved oxygen delivery and it also delivers all your nutrients to your muscles. It improves your aerobic metabolism and it also supports the brain and it's very, very anti-inflammatory. So for all of your muscles that are burning after a good soccer workout, essential fats are really going to help you here. Some of our best sources here are nuts, seeds, avocado, olives, cold pressed oils. And you want to do about two per day. And I'll put here an eighth of a cup, but really, I mean, just look at a couple tablespoons. That's good. Great places to get these in is to put your essential fats on your salads. Uh, have a handful of nuts a couple times a day. It's a great way to get it in. About 50 to 10,000 50, to 10,000 calories can be stored in your adipose tissue, which is the flight term for fat cells. And we have over a trillion fat cells in our body. We got these fat cells during our third trimester in the womb. The only other time you get more is usually during puberty, you might grow a few more. So all these fat cells do is that they expand and they shrink, but they never go away. So the other place that you can store about two to 3,000 calories is actually in your muscles. And these are used for backup fuel. So when you're out of glycogen, fats kick in. When we eat during the week, impacts your performance on the weekend. What you eat on game day impacts your performance on the game, and what you eat after impacts your next game. Does that all make sense? So it's always a continuum. No matter what you're doing, it's always going to affect the next thing. So what we want to do is we want to eat organic, whole foods that are your ticket to optimal performance. Whether you're a professional soccer player or a weekend warrior, this is what we need to do. So the most of next question here is when we want to eat. So three to four hours before the big game, you're going to have a large carbohydrate meal. An example of a carbohydrate meal, we're going to have wholemeal pasta with tempeh, rice and beans, chicken and salad. So lots of carbohydrates, tiny bit of protein, three to four hours before the meal, before the game. Sweet potatoes are also really good here. Whole grain cereal, if it's in the morning, you're going to have a big bowl of whole grain cereal, maybe with some rice milk. And the function of this is to prevent fatigue and saturate the glycogen stores. 30 minutes before the game, you're going to have a piece of fruit. And at halftime, you're going to have high glycemic foods. So anyone heard of the glycemic index? Most people? The glycemic index is how fast food turns into glucose in your body. So halftime is, what, 10, 15 minutes max? So you want to saturate those glycogen stores as fast as you can. So the best way to do that is to have fruit or real fruit juice. So after the game, you're going to, within 30 minutes to one hour, you're going to want to be eating this meal to saturate your glycogen. That's right. You always want to pack as much fruit and juice, crackers and granola bars as you can when you're out on the road. When you're in the restaurant, you want to watch out for your hidden fats because that's really what's going to slow you down. Those are going to be in your creamy soups in those flaky pastries that they show up at the hotel in the morning and on the salad dressings, you know, even at Subway, you know, the creamy sauce. So we always want to go for a light oil or a lemon-based dressing. If you can, you want to have clear-based soups if you're having a soup. You always want to go for grilled, baked, or broiled. Don't assume off the menu. Always ask your server, make sure that you get what you want. You always want to go for your baked potato and your steamed broccoli over that 
mashed potato because that's going to be full of butter and fat and dairy, which we all know we don't want to eat. So I think we've learned here that choosing the right foods at the right time will enhance our performance and it's going to create an edge over your competitors. So if you can get your teams up and running, eating their carbohydrates three to four hours before, getting the fruit in, getting your half time, and continuing that eating right after the game, you're going to see a big improvement in your players.